Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and this is what is hopefully going to be a quick video uh, about recoding or setting up the uh, Roxa Puzzle Box, uh, the secret lockable thing with the, the twiddly irising bit uh, that I built the video of already, but I had a couple of comments uh, correctly saying that I glossed over the uh, the setting up of the code. Uh, mainly I just walked back the video and I didn't understand how it was working and then I did a little bit of research and figured it out and got it working but neglected to actually film that bit. So I'm going to take it partially apart, show you how to recode it or, or change the code or set it up in the first place and hopefully it will be a little bit clearer. Uh, so the box itself is locked at the moment but uh, not locked coded so I just need to turn that a little bit there oh no it is in fact locked so I shall now oh, there we go yeah just have to recode that to open that now to take it apart uh, the easiest way I've found is to take off this top panel oh, which is sprung uh, the other end of this elastic band connects into that hook there on the two teeth just like that just there. So ideally you can unhook and uh, pry, pry this open gently and then it sort of springs across to there and you can just take that off. Leave that attached to there and that's that. Now the next bit you need to take out is these three wheels in here. They're the ones that set the codes on and obviously recode it all. Now the best way I've found of taking this apart, obviously if you're, if you're watching this as you're building it or before you built one then you don't need to take it apart. Obviously you just need to do the, the buildy bit. Uh, carefully take off this front panel uh, that obviously attaches around the sides as well like that and then you need to take out this single the bit with the three prongs on it that goes into these holes here and the front bit and by doing that you'll take out these three dials as well so close that over because this is the other end of the hook that that attaches, that's what unhooks it, unlocks it when they go into the, the dials there. That enables that to be pulled back into it. So move that well out of the way, you don't need to worry about that for now. That stays in, in the case. So gently pry open that back piece and then the whole front assembly, which should come out it might start coming apart while you're doing it so actually I'm going to take that off of there there's one cog that goes on the back and then this and then all of the rest of it so now I should be able to gently ease up and ease out there you go that's that and that's the other piece if you manage to get it all out in one then it will look like that so you've got the whole thing connected to the, the three wheels inside there and then this. You don't need the rest of that now until you start putting it back together again. So keep that all to one side. Uh, this goes together quite easily. There's obviously the one back piece. Then you have the back support. And then you've got a washer, a code, a washer, a code, a washer, and then the special code. This is the wheel that doesn't have the interior and the interior piece. That piece you can actually leave on there. Uh, that piece you need to lock in place so it's got uh, so when the one is at the top the one is at the top. Um, it will obviously only going in four directions so one's you know close and the others aren't. Uh, it's only got numbers on one side so make sure that's on there correctly and say one being at the top or zeros at the top and one's off at a slight angle over that way. So once you've got that bit done and all the rest of this built, then you come to the code piece. So I'll cut the video and start again and show you how to set up a code and program it. Uh, let's get the bits that I don't need to now. Uh, right, these, this washer is the same as the first one you put on there, which is slightly bigger. So that's an important one to keep on the end. Uh, the other three, this one that goes on the outside end is thicker. So again, that's an important one. These two are the ones that go in between those. So they're the same, but doesn't matter which way around they go. Then you've got three pieces left, P1, P2, and P3. I'll talk to you about those 
when we figured out what code we're going to set. So, right now, you need to come up with a three digit number that is going to be your lock code. Now, as mentioned in the instruction manual, there are several codes that you can't use uh, due to the way it works and the way it locks up. I haven't got the instruction manual to hand anymore, so I don't know which numbers you can't use but your instruction manual will tell you obviously if you're building this then that will help you out there uh, i've decided to set this on a number uh, i've decided on the number zero six four now it works so i know i know it works so that's okay now that's when the decoding tool comes in comes into play uh, let me just maneuver some light a little bit more in the right place uh, right now i'll put some numbers up on the screen so you know the, the code itself is going to be zero six four but you need the decoding tool to tell you how to set these up for that code. So what you need to do is initially, this big wheel at the back, the one that's not sprung in, will only lock into certain places. You need to turn that so the, the three, C3 and P3, are exactly the same number. So you already know that. That's going to be the four, the, the last of your digits, the third digit. You need to turn that so you can see that number in there. So that's one, so we're going the wrong way. Two, three, four is visible down in there. Hopefully you can just about see that. Uh, so we know that that's now set correctly. That affects everything else. Then you turn this outside B ring to find out what the C1 and the C2, well, you know what they are. They're the code numbers, the Cs. The P1 and the P2 are what you'll want to find out. So uh, C1 is going to be zero. So we turn that until there is a zero in there. And that tells us that the P1 digit is nine. So make a note of that somewhere. So you've got nine something four. Uh, and then you need to use the P2 number. Uh, to find the P2 number, you need the C2 number. So that's your second digit of the code, which on mine is gonna be six. So that's on five. So we turn that round to six. And now the P2 number is revealed to be three. So we've got the, the three digit code number, zero, six, four, which is what we're gonna to use to unlock it and the P number down here, which is for programming. Uh, I assume that's what the P means, it w works for me. So we've got that as 934. So to unlock it, 034, to program it, 934. Now it won't always be that, depending on the, the last number, depends on what the other numbers are gonna be. So if that last number was two and six, that would have been five. So it, you know, met, it, messes everything up so as long as you've got a note of those two numbers the one you need to unlock it and the one you need to program it you're away now the way this works you put it together backwards so p3 is the first number that you put in but it's the last number of your digit so on mine p3 is going to be four now this disc you don't do anything with the bit you do something with is that ring that's in there but you don't move that what you do is use this arrow that's burnt in on here to point to your final number. So we're going to use four. So we put that, so it points to the four. Obviously if it was three or two, you'd just put that on in a different position. It locks onto any one of the numbers. So we put that on as the four, and then basically lock that in place with a washer. So that, that's the easy one. That's, that's done. Now, the second number, the P2 number, is the next dial we put in. Now, this is the one where things get a little bit tricky. Um, the P second P number is three, so you need to put that in the three. Now, this one is actually two blocks. It's a block either side. So, basically, you put that in on the three, and then on the other side, you put the other side in like that. So they're the same either side. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. Um, and that's where that goes. Now that goes on top of there. It doesn't matter where it goes as long as that's not in the middle of those two. It's not keyed in. It is free turning. So that goes in there anywhere where it will fit and turn around. And then one of the other washers goes on there. Nice and easy so far. P1 is exactly the same. Uh, you need to put in, program in your P number. Now this is the one that I got wrong when I was putting it together. I put the bit in from the wrong side. So you've got the nine, that is my number. You put it in from the back. Uh, because that is what catches against that 
I had it the other way around and it was only just catching because this is obviously a lot thinner than that side. So again, that goes on the nine for me. If, if you want to set yours up as 064, feel free, use exactly the same numbers. If you don't, use the code ring and copy down your P numbers from your initial setup. So again, that can go on there anywhere as long as it's not directly over that bit. So that's free turning as well. Then we got our last washer that goes on there. Then we have this bit. Now it's got these engraved pieces that are sort of possibly visible through the, the work to the front. So put those so they're facing the front so it's nice and easy. It can go either way up. They're both exactly the same. And then the last one goes on there. Now that one should be a nice tight fit, but it's been taken apart a couple of times on mine, so it's not quite as tight as it might be. Be careful when you're putting it back together, because if that falls off, you might have to take it apart again to get that in there. Now, before you put it back together, or before you install it, I don't remember if it said to put that on there or to feed it through one at a time. I don't recall, but this is how I'm doing it now. Uh, make sure that when you turn it, it all turns free and smooth, and if you put a little bit of friction on there, you should stop them turning until it picks it up that one and then it will pick up that one and going back the other way again that will turn around until it picks up the second one and then that will go almost a rotation until it picks up the first one so that is how it's programmed basically by turning that round to a certain number then you leave that one alone while you turn the second one on its own around to the other number and then you leave that alone while you bring that one back to home. Now I'm going to get this put back in there. I say basically it's just a case of trying to line it up. You might need to re-lubricate to make things a little bit smoother. You might not. It's you know one of those things. But uh, we'll just once I get that on there, then we'll be good to go. So I'll get that back installed and then show you how it works when it's in place. So with that assembled, I haven't obviously put the top cover on yet. Uh, when it's on, remember that there's going to be a band pulling this hook that way so that will always be putting a bit of pressure and friction on all of them so when you turn it it will be a little bit tighter than it was when you were testing it uh, so to uncode it to decode it to open it you need to turn it uh, clockwise uh, anti-clockwise i believe yes anti-clockwise now you need to go at least two turns to make sure that it picks up this last wheel i've seen it's just been picked up there so then we'll turn that around until we get to our zero which is just there. Now you'll see, hopefully, that that has left the wider opening on that last back wheel just in line with where this is. That's exactly where you need it to be. So then you need to go clockwise past your digit, which is six, and we need to come around to it one more time. So that is there, and that has brought the second cut out in line with that. So now everything's being stopped. The only thing stopping that from coming back and hitting in unlocking is the first one which we've got to turn around anti-clockwise again till we get to our final digit which is uh, the four so that's coming around now there we go that's just locked into there so that's fallen into into all of the grooves but doesn't quite unlock yet it gives a little clicky unlock but then as it says on there to unlock you need to turn it all that way which basically moves all of the grooves in and pushes that in there and that enables that to come back all the way to unlocked. So while it's unlocked, I'm going to put the top back on there because it's easier to do it when it's not under so much tension. Make sure you get the band hooked under there, not just in the first hook. And then it's the trick of getting everything lined up. Uh, I found it easier to get that back three in there first because they can move around a little bit. So if you get those in there first, then everything else, you can just shift it around a little bit until that all goes back together there. Now to lock it, you should just be able to turn that anti-clockwise a bit. Brings that back up into play. Open and unlock just on that little movement. And then if you continue past the lock bit and spin it, that locks it completely. So that's now locked until we put in the code again which we need to do to, open, to be able to actually close the, the lid. So we'll do that again, just to make sure everything works. We go anti-clockwise first to zero, past the six, all the way around to the six again, and then back to the four. You'll hear a, as it partially opens, 
and then anti-clockwise that last bit to disengage it completely so that goes back on there and then we can lock it shut and that is shut so apologies for missing out on that on the first run through of it i don't i thought i'd sort of covered it but watching it back i hadn't i'd skipped over a piece but hopefully that has solved it and anyone else that's found any problems with coding it or decoding it or changing the code on it uh if you've got any other problems or questions give me a shout let me know i don't know if i missed anything until someone tells me so please do uh if you are building one of these yourself i do have another video i'll try and put a little card up there i've not done these card things before but i'll try and put a card up linking to the actual build of it so watch this and watch that in conjunction with each other and hopefully that will be all the information you need um thank you so much uh i've done other wooden things since this so keep an eye out on the playlist for this and these and those and others obviously other builds as well if you like the channel subscribe and click the bell to get notifications i'm doing some live streams at the moment so you can always come along and visit me live while i'm doing those thank you for watching hopefully it's been informative for you but let me know thanks for watching bye bye